There's an interesting, weird test case. Um, it's just this sort of sensational tabloid-type news item about um, some U.S. TV star is being sued by her ex-partner for her refusal to allow one of two embryos, tiny little embryo, embryos that are now frozen, to be used by a surrogate mother. Uh, the partner, I believe, or maybe not, of her ex-partner. It's interesting because with all this talk of, say, wrongful life or wrongful birth or whatever, and particularly interesting from the perspective of, say, an asymmetry argument, you've got, we've already sort of seen wrongful life. How about wrongful non-life? Um, like Benatar talks about potential human beings, I think that this is a pretty clear instance of potential human beings, uh, or is the closest thing that you're going to get outside of the realm of abstraction. Um, being deprived of their inheritance, that's how it's being phrased. You have two frozen embryos, that are probably very, very tiny. Um, <coughs> And someone has launched a lawsuit sort of on their behalf to say that they're not being allowed to exist in order to enjoy their inheritance. I think that this kind of thing is inevitable, the way that our ethical system is going, where everybody is trying to say, you are victimizing me, you are harming me. Um, and I hate to say it, but my Andy smile comes back at moments like this. Um, that irritating smile that makes people want to throttle me. It's not that I like the fact that, you know, somebody's arguing another case. It's just that the, the postmodern penchant for this kind of thing is just incredible. There's a bottomless pit of victims to draw from. Or I shouldn't say pit, I'll say a bottomless well of victims to draw on. You always want to place yourself in a position where you are the other person's victim. And that's the way our legal and ethical system works now. And if I've been victimized by you, then there are damages to be paid to me. Um, that's, I think, um, why a lot of people I've heard use the term the age of ressentiment. You're sort of everything that you do is a reaction against somebody else victimizing you. It's a fascinating um, dynamic and it seems to sort of become more and more exacting as it refines itself. Um, I wonder what's going to be next, like you know the sort of angry white male who sits in his easy chair at night looking at the TV going, what next, what next, what next? And this is precisely the kind of drinking with Bob type thing where you're, you know, a lot of people have become convinced that the world is going insane. Uh, I don't see it that way. I just see it as sort of a culmination, or the latest, I guess, manifestation, and the latest sort of twist on this idea, this cult of the victim. Um, I wonder how a clever lawyer would sort of say that we'd now be victimizing these embryos by allowing them to live, and then you would, you know, argue the other case, you're depriving them by allowing, by not allowing them to live just kind of an interesting argument, you know, to look at the Benetarian asymmetry. Um, that which cannot exist cannot be deprived. Well, wait a minute, we're talking about potentials as though they could be sort of helped by not being put into existence, therefore they can be deprived type thing. Now we have a real world case of this. Um, somebody will think a couple of moves ahead and sort of change the dynamics around to make it look as though like everyone again is trying to jockey for the position of victim here it's this cult of harm and the cult of harm avoidance and the cult of the victim I, I, I call it um, just a humorous news story but it kind of hit home, I'll leave a link for it in the links part below